Hey there, friends. Welcome back to episode 29 of that live portfolio update where we're growing 50K into a million bucks. Now, last week closed a little bit jittery with a Friday 1.5% drop in the ASX, but let's hope it opens a little bit better on Tuesday. Now, before we jump into it, my fam at home, they want me to grow my beard as a challenge, so I thought we could incorporate that into the portfolio. So let's put a figure on it. Let's say I won't cut any of the length off until we hit 150K. Now it took six months to get 40K, so I might have a Santa Claus beard by the end of it. But without further ado, let's just jump on into it. All right, benchmark time. So how did STW fare this fortnight in comparison to our portfolio? Well, there we go. We're up 2.2% for the trading fortnight compared to STW, which was down 0.1%. There was one point on the 19th, we're up over 5%. But we retreated as the week closed out. Either way, I'm happy with the performance. So how did our stocks do this fortnight? Well, as you already know from the last slide, we're up 2.2% for the trading week. Now, as you might remember, COG became a sell at the end of last week, but funnily enough, they had an announcement on the day I was going to sell, giving them a terrific run. They were up over 16% for us during the trading fortnight. Clearview was up 9% on the back of a great announcement, and our materials were down 2% each, and I've Group down 1.45%. So here's all the last buys, holds, and sells. The ones that changed are as follows and why. Now it was only one, but it was a big one. COG moved from sell to buy with its great announcement and a quick chart flash. You can see it flirting here with the sell, but then it recovered with an uptick and now it's trading at $1.72 compared to last month's close of $1.52. We were lucky to reap the rewards on this one, but only just. Now it's pretty smelly out there, so please remember guys, these are not recommendations. They are just what I own and the rules that I follow, and it's pretty much purely just for entertainment. So please do your own research before you jump into any shares. All right, so since inception, we have a pure capital gain of positive 3.44%. The portfolio still has a dividend return of 4.74%, and this gives us a total return of positive 8.19%. Yay to the new record, guys. I love how there is no red weeds in there and it's looking like a pretty fruitful basket of goodies. The closest ones to red are our newcomers, Big Ben and Challenger, but they're doing okay. The rest are above 10% though. That's awesome. All right guys, today's nugget section is going to be on a recent purchase. We're gonna do a deep dive on Bendigo Bank, ASX ticker BEN. Now we'll do the normal thing here. We'll have an overview of the company, the management, some numbers, and of course, some graphs. So let's start with the overview. Who is Bendigo? From their website, Bendigo is one of Aussie's biggest banks with more than 7,000 employees and nearly 2 million customers. Their vision is to be the bank of choice for Australians, and you've probably heard their countless ads from the Better Big Bank campaign, where they talk about them being the fifth biggest bank snapping at the heels of the other four. They are modest, but they are voted the most trustworthy brand of bank out of them all. Now their history. Bendigo began back in 1858 in the Bendigo Goldfields, back when there was a huge influx of migration. They established the Bendigo Mutual Permanent Land and Building Society for the demand. Then in 1877, South Australia's Hindmarsh Building Society was established to help more Aussies get into homes. Now with these businesses and about 80 others, they came together to form what we know as the Bendigo and Adelaide Group, in which we join over 110,000 other shareholders when they listed early in 1993. They have more than 70 billion under management and their website says 3.3 billion market cap, but it's actually almost double that being just shy of six. All right, let's meet the management. Now this team was actually a tad hard to find. There was no mention of their story in the annual report, well that I could see of anyway. And I found this weird, so I found them on the website. So first up, let's do some directors. Let's meet Marnie Baker. So Marnie is working as a managing director and has been with Bendigo for over 33 years, which is amazing. She moved into exec team 22 years ago and was appointed the MD in 2018. Marnie has a Bob, which is a Bachelor of Business, majoring in accounting, and is a member of the Australian Society of Certified Accountants and a member of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. It's great to see this much experience at the head of Bendigo. Money has a 0.24% stake in the company, and that's valued at 14.5 million bucks. It's great to see so much skin in the game. Next up, we have Jacqueline Hay. There wasn't a whole heap of info on the website, so we'll just cross check with some stock doctor profile. Jackie has been a director since 2011 and appointed chair back in 2019. 
and has a good amount of experience in the telecommunication space outside Australia. When she started back as a graduate with Ericsson in Sweden, where she climbed the ladder into MD and CEO roles. Jackie brings to the board all of this business experience that she has built up over the years, which is great for Bendigo, and also great for some other companies that she is a non-exec director of, being well-named brands like Qantas and AGL. Jackie has a modest stake of 0.01% in the company, valued at 586K. It would be nice to see her increase this over time if Jackie sticks around. All right, let's do one more from the management. I couldn't find a CEO, but please meet Travis Crouch, who was the next longest serving member of Bendigo, working as the CFO. Travis has been with the bank since 2001 and held many positions, but took over the role of CFO since 2018. Travis has also been the chairman of the bank's pricing committee since 2016. Prior to the bank, his main experience was working nine years in audit and business services in several accounting firms. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a stake in the company for this guy. Now moving on to some numbers. Now first glance, I always love to check return on equity and make sure it's positive over the last few periods. And at first glance, we can see this gets a tick because they are. Typically I find banks are usually a bit lower and going back to a Phil Town and Buffett methodology, they usually like to see this number above 10 but it really comes down to the economics of the business. That's my opinion, do you agree? Next, we'll just pick out some standouts from the P&L. It's on annuals for simplicity. It's great to see the operating revenue increase year on year, except for that one time in June 2019, but assume this is from the COVID cough. But when you come down to the earnings before tax, it actually drops off from 2018, which seems to be from a spike of non-interest expense. That would be a flag for me to go back and check this out, as it continued to rise while on the following years, while the non-interest revenue decreased. Maybe it's due to interest rates. I'd be guessing, but I am keen to learn, as we're probably gonna be entering some more banks into our portfolio. If you're a finance guru, please let me know below. All right, quick balance sheet, and we'll just work out our favorite today being equity. In a perfect world, we like to see consistently increasing over a period of time. Let's have a little play with our boxes. So 12, 13, 14, good. 15, drop. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, good. Man, that was so bloody close for a straight flash of increases, but 15 let them down. I wonder why. Anywho, let's move on to some graphs. So first up, let's check out the five-year monthly. Now you can see quite clearly from Jan 2020, they absolutely fell off a cliff. But I had a quick look at ANZ and CBA, and it seemed they did also. Not to the extent, but definitely a cliff drop there. I can't quite remember what happened around this time, but I'll go back and do some research into it. I was more interested in this recent drop through from June 30th, 2021 at 10 bucks 50 down to November 2021 at $8.50. That's near a 20% drop on the monthly closes. Even when they announced their financial year 21 results, they dropped 10% on the day. I found it weird as the report was gloating about record profits and revenue throughout it. Maybe it was more on the back of the acquisition announcement of buying 100% of Ferocia for 116 million, which gives them ownership of the brand up. Either way, I found it weird why investors got their knickers in a knot, but yay for more things to look into. All right, let's look at the entry on the three month daily. Now I was gonna start something new here. I'll put these lines in the buys and rules ones, starting from the entry date, so we can see them clearly. The red and green three point trend lines will still be active, but we can see we entered here on the 29th of the third at 10 bucks 22 a share, and the daily closes has actually been quite well for us so far. Only once it flirted with the entry on the 14th of the fourth. Our 10% stop loss looks so lonely down here at the bottom, but let's hope it stays that way. It's only early days for Bendigo though. They're only just hit a month old next week. But welcome to the team, mate. Please do us proud. Now let's move on. Boom, it's that time of the month again. Another 37.50 has hit the bank this week as per our trading plan. Now I said this last month and I'll say it again. Doing this auto transfer each month really helps the portfolio grow when starting out. It's like that one consistent thing we can control and it really helps that snowball grow momentum. We also had IGL give us some dividends and we have pushed well over that 5K. So we can now look for another stock next week. All right, so our cash account is now at $6,912. With our $6,912 in cash, plus $85,989 in stocks, takes us to an overall value of 92,901 bucks. 
which is about a positive whopping 6.99% total portfolio gain from last week. Nice combo of capital gains, payouts, and contributions. Well, I hope you got through your beer and you enjoyed that episode. Tune in next fortnight for more not financial advice, and you all know the saying, keep healthy and wealthy. See you guys.